Hi right guys, welcome back. In this video we're going to populate those vertex color channels with the information that we want. So in the previous video we created this attribute called color ramp. Okay, now we can make use of that with another wrangle node. But this time we want to work with vertices. Okay. And we're looking at the vertex data on the uh, geometry spreadsheet. And as you can see at the moment, we've just got some empty UV coordinates there. So we can start by initializing that color attribute. So we could just say something simple like at CD equals zero. And there you can see we've created that vector three attribute for color, all right? So the first ramp that we'll do will be our wind controller. So we can be able to specify whether we want the entire plant to be waving around under the wind or just the very tips. And we'll pack that into the red channel of the vertex color. Okay, so we'll specify cd.r for red. We'll use the channel ramp function uh, and we'll create a ramp called wind ramp. Okay, and the position along this ramp is going to be the value of that color ramp point attribute. So we can grab that from the point attribute list. It was called call ramp. So what we're doing here is the position along the ramp is the color ramp attribute that we created in that previous wrangle node. And if you remember, this attribute describes where it is along the length of it, bottom to top, okay? And the num and the, the, the actual point number we're, we're talking about is referenced by at PT num here. So it's going to look at the individual point number and grab that color ramp attribute and then place it along the wind ramp parameter, okay? So with that line of uh, code completed, we can press this little magic button here to populate our parameters. And already you can see in our red channel of our vertex attribute here, we've got some values ranging from zero to one, which is exactly what we need. And if we scrub these pins on the uh, on the ramp here, you can see we are getting color ramp. We are getting color information on our geometry. Okay. So if we jump back to the scene view, and there you can see it in the scene view, we're now getting this nice gradient from black to red. And this parameter here, we, we can promote up to the digital asset level. So um, if you can imagine in Unreal, wherever we have color value, so here at the very tips, this is where the wind will be applied to. So you could have just a very sort of gentle wind just along the, the, the very ends, or you could have a more broad effect. So that's our first ramp, okay? The next ramp that we can create and pack into the vertex color will be the color blend. Uh, so for example, we want a nice brown fading off into a, a, a green and we can pack that into the green channel. So we'll do exactly the same at cd.g this time for the green channel. And we'll make use of a channel ramp this time called color blend. I don't know, seems to make sense. And again, we'll grab that point attribute from from the geometry with a by referencing it and then referencing the point number okay and end the statement with a semicolon there and again we'll press this little magic button to populate the ramp and now we've got two ramps we've got the wind ramp and we've got the color blend ramp okay so these are totally independent of each other even though the colors are blending and showing visually in the viewport we can use these data channels uh, completely independently uh, so if I just take out all the wind, you can see now that our green channel is mapped to that color blend and we can, using the user interface in Unreal, we can sort of really start to tweak how we want our colors to blend along the length of our, of our geometry. All right, awesome. So with that, I can plug it into the rest of our network. And just double check that we've still got our color data on the channels. I'm just going to bring back this. Okay. So you can see on the vertices here, we've still got our color information that is being driven by those two ramps. 
okay and what I want to do before I forget is just package those onto our digital asset okay these two ramps here so what I'm going to do is right click on the name of the digital asset here and go to type properties jump across to our parameters tab and here we go we've got our basic set of parameters on the digital asset uh, and from there I'm just going to grab that wind ramp put it into the root and also our color blend and you can see these appear as parameters here now I'm just going to give them a bit more descriptive names okay and hit apply and what I might do as well just put these both in a folder so I'm going to select them both right click put parameters into a folder and maybe call this one ramps okay set that over to simple accept and what we'll do now is we'll do a quick file save to save that asset in fact we'll do that once the display flags all the way at the bottom and you can see in the viewport here we've got some funky vertex colors showing through that's absolutely fine we can fix that within our shader in uh, unreal so let's just save that again and then jump back into unreal and then re-import and rebuild cool so there you go we've got our stem information coming in as you can see at the moment it's all kind of funky colors because it's just reading and displaying the um, the vertex color and displaying it to us but we'll fix that with uh, with a, a new shader and if we select our digital asset here you can see it's brought in those ramps for us here where we can really get in there and start tweaking those color values okay so with that what we'll do in the next video is I'll just show you um, a dead simple setup in Unreal, how we can create the required shader for this. And I'm no expert at material shaders, so if I'm doing something wrong, please let me know in the comments. Um, but you know, all we're doing is we're just sending data from Houdini and reading it in a different way in Unreal. So we'll do that in the next video. So uh, thanks for watching.